Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about fuel dilution in your oil. So this is a uh, CAT C7 here, and uh, the principles I'm going to be talking about will apply to pretty much any diesel engine. Uh, customer complained that there is fuel in his oil, and pull the dipstick out, it is way overfilled. And what you can tell also is that the oil is not very dark. Usually diesel oil, after it's been ran for a little bit, is going to be super black um, due to the carbon getting into the oil from the combustion process of diesel. So, really thin oil, uh, lower viscosity, seems like it's got fuel dilution. If you've been doing the oil sampling as well, you'll notice it's coming back and saying you have fuel in your oil. So how do we troubleshoot that? So let's put on our thinking caps, or some of us may already have them on, and let's brainstorm as to where the fuel could be getting in the oil. Now, I'm only talking about diesel engines because that's what I know mostly about, and mostly cat engines. Although these principles will apply to any diesel if it's a Cummins International, you know, Detroit, Mercedes, whatever. Because there's typically only a couple different types of fuel systems. So, if you have an older mechanical fuel pump set up, um, you know, we're talking the non computered motors made in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, um, it's basically it's going to be your fuel nozzles, the lines leading to the fuel nozzles, or your high pressure fuel pump itself, that's typically where you can get fuel in your oil. Also the head. The head on any engine, not any engine, but most engines have a fuel rail, whether it's a return or a pressurized rail, and it'll have an oil passages, whether that's oil pressure or just oil return. Um, it's pretty rare to have the head be the cause. Where else could it be coming from? So if you have a Huey setup or you have a high pressure common rail setup, that can also be a cause of contamination of fuel in your oil. But on cats, almost all the time, especially on C7s and C9s, high pressure setups, it's going to be the injectors. It's nearly always the injectors. Um, Cummins Detroit, Mercedes International, probably also highly likely it's going to be your injectors causing this problem. Um, if you have an electronic unit injector also on a C15, C13, probably going to be the injectors. So that's why we're checking the injectors first for leaks. Um, and that's what we're going to be showing you how to do in this video. All right, thanks. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this fuel additive to the fuel in the fuel filter. That's the cat part number for it, 1U5574. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the fuel filter and run the engine for about 30 seconds. Now this engine is already up to operating temperature. When you're checking for fuel leaks, you want your engine to be at operating temperature. So we're just going to remove this fuel filter here. Uh, it doesn't really matter which fuel filter you put it in. Uh, the easiest one to access is usually the best. This is a secondary fuel filter. And I have a drain pan under it. And what we're going to do is we are going to remove the fuel filter, drain, I don't know, four ounces of fuel out of it. And then we're going to add the, uh, the fuel dye. Now the fuel dye is... Uh, fully compatible with diesel fuel. It's not going to cause any injector damage or anything like that. So we're going to pour it in there and it's going to dilute with the fuel inside the fuel filter. Uh, make sure none of the aluminum shielding on the cap gets in your fuel filter. You don't want that getting into your fuel system. So we pour the, uh, I think these are about two ounces into our fuel filter. Just need to use the uh, the one little vial. They're about six dollars. And we're gonna screw our fuel filter back on. So after we screw this fuel filter back on, make sure your dipstick tube's in. We're gonna start the engine 
and run it for 30 seconds. And I like to rev the engine up to about 12 to 1500 RPM just to get your fuel pressure higher. Then you're going to shut the engine off. After that, you're going to remove the valve cover and we're going to inspect the injectors for any signs of leakage. So let's remove the valve cover. Valve cover and air intake tubing has been removed. So we have our injectors. This is an inline six, C7. So we have six injectors. And you can see, you see a little bit of oil on top of each injector. Um, you're looking for one that basically doesn't have any oil. It looks washed out. See, it's number six. Uh, I don't see any oil on top of that. So we're going to hit it with a black light. That's what the die was for. But just looking at it, it looks like number six is probably our cause. So here's our black light. You can use pretty much any black light. Um, and what we're going to look for is signs of that fluorescent dye anywhere. So it should be leaking out uh, around the injector seal or the solenoid. So here's cylinder five, and there's cylinder six. As you can see, it is bright green, fluorescent green. So we know number six is our cause. That injector is gonna have to be removed and replaced. And I also recommend changing the oil and the oil filter at this time. Um, you don't want that fuel to stay in there very long because it dilutes your oil and it can cause bearing damage. So that is how you troubleshoot a fuel in the oil problem.